I am one in a generation of young people who came of age in the shadow of September 11th. I was 20 years old when 9-11 happened, crumbled on the floor of my parents' bedroom, watching the towers fall over and over again between shots of Osama bin Laden with his beard and turban. In that moment, I realized that the face of America's new enemy looked like my grandfather, looked like my brothers, looked like my cousins, looked like us. It wasn't long before we started hearing news of hate violence across city streets in America. And a few days later, Bobir Singh Sodi was a Sikh man who was gunned down in front of his gas station in Phoenix by a man who called himself a patriot. I fell into deep despair. My grandfather had traveled by steamship to America to find a new home back in 1913. So my family had been here for 100 years. I, I had always seen myself as deeply American. But in that one moment, and really ever since then, I began to see myself through the eyes of other people who saw me as perpetually foreign and potentially terrorist. I escaped into my bedroom and fell at my grandfather's feet and asked him for his wisdom. And he gave me the heart of the Sikh tradition. Nam Dan Ishnan, he said, in order to realize yourself, in order to realize God, you must act here and now without fear. And so I did. I grabbed my camera, I got in my car, my cousin had a list of questions, and I had a road map. And we started traveling across the United States for months and years, capturing the stories of men, women, and children, Sikh, Muslim, Arab Americans, whose stories were never heard on the evening news. Here's some of what we found. I'm at Ground Zero, and there is a young Sikh turban man who has a Brooklyn accent. He was going to work that morning when the towers began to fall, and he found himself running with thousands of other people. When he stopped to catch his breath, a group of men across the street turned at him, pointed at him, and said, hey, you effing terrorist, take that turban off. Amrik Singh Javla found himself running for his life the second time in 15 minutes. He was the first of thousands of people who were caught up in the hate violence and beatings and vandalisms and stabbings across America. They say that in 10 years, nothing has changed. But one thing has. There is a groundswell here that wasn't there before. There is a groundswell of people all across the country and really around the world, people of faith and moral commitment who are standing up and taking action in ways that were never possible before. I remember in uh, Chicago, after hearing my story about the Sikh community, an African-American man pointed to his braids and said, my braids are my turban. I remember in New York City, a gay man standing up and saying, just as I have to fight for the right for gays to come out of the closet, I have to fight for the right of Sikhs to wear their turbans. And in the South, an evangelical man who stood up and said, you and I are not so different from one another. I too have been seen as an outsider. People, when they hear one story, see themselves in it and recognize that we all share a common desire to be seen the way that we see ourselves. And we can all remember a time when that circle of who counts as one of us did not include us. And I think that we can name that common desire to expand that circle as the one thing that binds us in common cause. And I think the millennial generation is the answer more and more young people have grown up with as the most diverse generation in the history of our country, racially, culturally, religiously. Those old binaries that were left over from the culture wars don't really apply to us anymore. Whether evangelical, Buddhist, Muslim, atheist, people of my generation adhere less to dogma and more in the call to love one another. And I believe that there is great potential here there is great possibility for people to look at these problems that face us today, problems like climate justice, like hate violence, like immigration reform, like LGBT oppression, not as separate causes that should be conceived of and thought as different issues, but as bound up with one another. Because we can't advance any one community unless we're advancing all of us together. And so as I turn 30, and I approach the 10-year anniversary of 9-11, I'm reminded of my grandfather's call to action. And I'm reminded that I, as well as many young people around the country, joining together with people of all generations, must emerge from the shadows of 9-11 if we are to create the kind of world, the kind of country, the kind of community that makes all of us flourish together.